Bonjour à tous. In the fight against COVID-19, our focus will always be here at home. But this is a global challenge. To keep Canadians safe and restart our economy, we need to defeat this virus not just within our borders, but wherever it will be found. That's how we'll beat COVID-19 for good. So just like we're coordinating our efforts across the country, we're collaborating with allies around the globe, too. Earlier this morning, I joined leaders from other countries and from civil society and industry to work together on accelerating the global development of COVID-19 vaccines, treatments, and testing. We all share a common goal, ending this pandemic. And Canada is stepping up to do its part. Canada's contribution of over $850 million for the global fight against COVID-19 includes investments in Canadian and international research. At home, we're providing funding for everything from the University of Saskatchewan's Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization for their work on vaccine development to Vancouver-based Abcelera for treatments. Right across the country, we're making sure that Canadians can keep leading. Our $850 million commitment also includes support for vaccine development through the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations and the WHO's Solidarity Trial that helps hospitals share information on treatments. The more we cooperate, the more likely that we find a cure and find it quickly. And that's something we all want to see. Depuis le début de la crise, on se concentre sur ce qui se passe chez nous. On travaille fort pour assurer la sécurité des Canadiens et appuyer nos travailleurs de première ligne en préparant la relance de l'économie. Mais la COVID-19 est un défi mondial qui exige une solution mondiale et tout le monde doit faire sa part. La contribution du Canada à la lutte mondiale contre la COVID-19, qui s'élève à plus de 850 millions de dollars, comprend des investissements dans les travaux de recherche menés au Canada et ailleurs dans le monde. Ça comprend aussi la mise au point d'un vaccin par l'intermédiaire de la Coalition pour les innovations en matière de préparation aux épidémies et le travail de l'OMS qui favorise l'échange de renseignements entre les hôpitaux. En travaillant tous ensemble sur le même enjeu, on maximise nos chances de trouver une solution plus rapidement. Et c'est ce que tous les pays et tous les citoyens du monde veulent. COVID-19 is an unprecedented challenge. But it's not the first time that Canadians have been called to do their part. Over the past generations, Canadians have time and time again stepped up in defense of our shared future. This week marks the 75th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands and a victory in Europe day. From the fall of 1944 to the spring of 45, thousands of Canadians pushed back the occupying forces, road by road, town by town. They fought, and many died, to defend the values that we hold dear, peace and democracy, the rule of law, and human rights. And today, 75 years later, we remember their courage and their sacrifice. Earlier this morning, I spoke with Mark Rutte, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands. We talked about the close, lasting bonds of friendship that exist between our two countries. We talked about how we collaborated together in years past, standing for our values, fighting side by side, and how we're doing that again today in this global crisis, in friendship and in solidarity. So today, I ask all Canadians to join me and our friends and allies in the Netherlands at 2 p.m. Eastern Time to observe two minutes of silence in honour of our veterans. As we pause, let's reflect on how each of us can live up to their example. Maybe you'll do your part by staying home to protect our healthcare workers. Maybe you'll bring groceries to an elderly neighbour or make a donation to a food bank or simply make the effort of sending a postcard to a veteran to thank them for their service. With your actions, you are contributing to your community and demonstrating that Canadians, time and time again, will continue to step up. I know the weather's getting nicer, 
we still need to be extremely careful. And not just for our seniors, but for everyone around us. So don't go out unless you absolutely have to. And if you do, keep two meters apart from each other. Cette semaine marque le 75e anniversaire de la libération des Pays-Bas et du jour de la victoire en Europe. De l'automne 1944 au printemps 1945, des milliers de Canadiens ont repoussé les forces d'occupation un village à la fois. Ils se sont battus et beaucoup ont donné leur vie pour défendre les valeurs qui nous sont chères. Et aujourd'hui, 75 ans plus tard, on se souvient de leur courage et de leur sacrifice. À 14 heures, heure de l'Est, j'invite tous les Canadiens à se joindre à moi pour observer deux minutes de silence en l'honneur de nos anciens combattants. Pendant ces deux minutes, pensons à la façon dont on peut tous suivre leur exemple. Peut-être que vous allez faire votre part en restant chez vous pour protéger nos travailleurs de la santé, en faisant un don à une banque alimentaire ou en écrivant une carte postale à un ancien combattant pour le remercier. Chacun d'entre nous peut aider sa communauté, mais peu importe ce que vous décidez de faire, continuez de rester chez vous et gardez deux mètres de distance les uns des autres. Merci beaucoup.